9. Bikini Atoll Many ships go to shipbreaking yards or are abandoned because they're old or damaged. But not many vessels can say they were used for nuclear bomb tests. This is exactly what happened, though, to the ships used in the US Army's Operation Crossroads in 1946. They chose Bikini Atoll in the Marshall Islands as the perfect place to conduct their experimentation at the beginning of the Cold War. The local people were moved to a neighboring island, and the US Navy officially designated the site as a ship graveyard. After this, 95 ships were moved into the lagoon. They included destroyers, submarines, battleships, and cruisers. Had the ships been in active service, it would have been the sixth largest fleet in the world. On July 1, 1946, the first bomb named Gilda was released from a B-29 bomber during Test Able. The target for the bomb was the Nevada, and the ship had been painted orange so it could be easily recognized from the skies. But the bomb missed its target, causing a good number of ships to sink below the waves. 24 days later, Tess Baker took place. This time, the damage was more significant and led to the sinking of the USS Saratoga and seven other ships. This was a massive feat since the Saratoga was a huge warship and it was still carrying lots of cargo like vehicles and planes. Despite this, the force of the blast was powerful enough to launch all 37,000 tons out of the water. From these two nuclear bomb tests alone, the realities of nuclear radiation began to become more and more apparent. Much of the water became contaminated very quickly. Not taking as many ships as casualties, Test Able was probably the most devastating. The bomb exploded in the air above the ships. Instead of connecting with the water or a vessel, it managed to increase the surface temperature of the water by 99,000 degrees Fahrenheit resulting in blast waves with speeds reaching 26 feet per second. The shock waves went outwards and upwards to a height of 98 feet. A third test, which would have been called Charlie, was scheduled, but after realizing how contaminated the test ships already were, it was cooled off. Some ships were towed away for further testing and decontamination, but many remain under the waves in this ship graveyard ever since, becoming popular with divers. 8. Alang Ship Breaking Yard Alang Yard on India's western coast contributes to nearly 40% of worldwide ship scrapping. They scrap and dismantle over 400 ships every year from all over the world. With over 200 ship breaking companies working here, many different vessels come to Alang to die. All kinds of boats like tankers, container ships, ferries, cruise liners, and navy ships make their final journey to this spot. The largest ship ever dismantled at Alang was known as MS Mont, an oil tanker that was the longest ship in the world, measuring 1,504 feet long. Moving close to the shoreline at high tide, the ships are pushed onto the beach by the waves and grounded. When the water moves back at low tide, the workers swarm in and quickly get to work. First, the interiors of the ships are stripped bare. Although you might think it's a waste, a lot of the materials salvaged are reused to outfit other boats if the condition's good enough, like wiring or furniture pieces that are sold on the market. The steel hulls of the ships are often melted down for building new boats too, or other construction projects. The work isn't easy though and comes with a fair share of risks. Many injuries and deaths happen at the shipyard every year. 7. Bay of Duadi Bu Although the Alang Yard in India probably does the most shipbreaking, one of the biggest ship graveyards on the planet can be found at the Bay of Nwadibu in Mauritania, a peninsula on the east coast of Africa. The reason Nwadibu has so many ships rusting on its shores and in its waters comes down to money. Disposing of a ship safely costs a lot of money thanks to the work involved in dismantling it. Therefore, many companies and boat owners who don't want to pay these costs turned to the local government of the island, which was struggling for cash. Through bribes, they were able to find a place to dump their unwanted ships at a fraction of the cost it would be to send them to a shipbreaking yard. The Chasseloup Lobat, a French Navy cruiser, was the first to be left in the bay. By the 1980s, the number of boats began to ramp up as businesses took advantage of the opportunity to get rid of their ships cheaply. Over 300 vessels now sit in Nwadibu Bay in all shapes and sizes. 
Although there were originally environmental fears with the rusting metal, and oil, fuel, or chemicals that may still be on board the boats, there is actually a silver lining for the area's marine life. Thanks to the unique structures under the water, the ships are now home to schools of fish, which provide food and employment to the local people. Alongside this, many residents have been able to make a living as salvages, taking anything of value from the abandoned ships in order to sell it later on. Have you ever seen a shipwreck in person? Tell us in the comments and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. 6. Truck Lagoon Truck Lagoon, once known as Truck Atoll, is one of the largest collections of World War II ships in the world. But these vessels aren't on land or the surface, but can only be found underwater, since the site is a graveyard for many vessels and soldiers too. Most of the ships here met their end after Operation Hailstone. Truck Lagoon was a stronghold for Japanese forces during most of the war, and as a result, it was a thorn in the side of the Pacific Theater for many US troops. During a three-day offensive between February 16th and 18th, 1944, the US sent out a massive fleet of vessels, including aircraft carriers, destroyers, cruisers, and submarines, to take on the islands by storm. A further attack two months later in April completely decimated Truck Lagoon. As a result of this combat, 400 planes and 70 ships were destroyed with many now lying under the waves. Some of the most famous ships here include the Japanese warship Fujikawa Maru, the Nippo Maru, which was a transport ship, and the carrier ship San Francisco Maru, which still has tanks stationed on its decks. If you explore this ship more, you'll even find vehicles, ammunition, and bombs waiting in its cargo holds. 5. Arthur Kilboat Graveyard, Staten Island the Arthur Kilbo Graveyard came about after the end of World War II. Located in New York City, the site was a gathering place for many condemned ships. Set up by the Witt Marine Equipment Company, which aimed to make money out of dismantling, they were unprepared for the sheer number of vessels sent their way. They worked as hard as they could, but over the time, the number of boats that were beached, rusting, and abandoned grew. The company struggled to keep up with the workload, and eventually a lot of the ships were left and forgotten about. One man named Sean O'Boyle has been documenting and photographing the wreck since 1987, watching as the vessels slowly rust and decay. He even went on board some of them, finding pieces of history, including letters written by crew members of the past. Over time, the number of ships has decreased, partly through them finally getting salvaged but also through time, neglect, and being pulled apart by weather and river tides. At one point in the 1980s, you could freely explore the ships, moving from one to the next without even stepping into the water, but nowadays you'd need a small boat of your own to get around. 4. The Moynag Ship Graveyard The Moynag Ship Graveyard is located in the middle of the Uzbekistan desert. You might be wondering how ships even got out there, especially when there's no water for miles. The answer lies in the fact that the Moynak Ship Graveyard lies in what was once the Aral Sea, one of the largest lakes on the planet that used to measure 26,300 square miles. But when the lake was dammed and the water diverted for irrigation use by the Soviet Union during the 1960s, the Aral Sea dried up, leaving ships stranded on the empty lake bed, with the closest water over 100 miles away. The local fishermen followed the water as it receded. Although, eventually, as the water began to dry up, salt levels increased, leading to the fish dying off. Since Moynak was a town that drew its livelihood from fishing, it slowly died alongside the lake. Fishing vessels were grounded and abandoned where they would have stayed afloat, and the community began to move away, seeking a better life elsewhere. Nowadays, the area is known as the Aralcum Desert rather than the Aral Sea the only reminders of its past life being empty fish canneries and signs, and the ghost ships on the arid wasteland. 3. Olenya Bay The region of Nezamednaya Cove on the Kola Peninsula is a graveyard where countless Russian submarines have been abandoned. The subs were towed to this secured spot in the 1970s after fulfilling their serving in the Russian naval fleet. Otherwise known as Olenya Bay, this area remained a secret for years, and the details of all the vessels here have been slowly revealed. During the Cold War, 
Russia's need for submarines grew since they were perfect covert vessels. As a result, shipyards could barely keep up with demand, churning out submarines and other warships as quickly as possible. But at this time of mass production, not much thought was put into what would happen with the submarines and other ships after the conflict. It's believed by many that some of the vessels may have been taken and used as target practice in military exercises, but many others remained rusting away in Alenya Bay. Over time, due to deterioration, they even started to float to the water's surface. People were happy to forget about the subs until the rust, oil, and fuel began to leak into the water. One of the submarines was taken and burned, and others were relocated. Eventually, in the 1990s, a private company started slowly dismantling them. Some of the submarines ended up being used for training, and another was turned into a museum exhibit. Although many of the subs were successfully recycled, satellite imagery still shows at least seven there. Some believe that these vessels might have been part of Russia's northern fleet of submarines, but they are no longer seaworthy. 2. Akaba Jordan Some ships are dumped and some are abandoned. Others are used for military tests or sent to shipbreaking yards. But the ships that made their way to Akaba in Jordan are purposefully sunk to create one of the best diving resorts in the world. Located in the Red Sea, many ships were selected for Akaba. These include the Cedar Pride, a Lebanese warship that sank in 1985. The ship is home to countless forms of marine life, among them colorful coral and striped lionfish. The crane barge Taiyong was scuttled in 1999, and divers can explore the skeleton of this unique ship, including the large crane it would have used while in operation. It's not just the ships that make up this marine park. There are also plane wrecks, including a large passenger aircraft, a Lockheed TriStar. Akaba is also home to an underwater military museum where divers can explore the wrecks of tanks and more to their heart's content. 1. The Skeleton Coast The Skeleton Coast stretches across 310 miles of coastline in Namibia. This long landscape gets its name from the many whales that have beached here over the years and their skeletons littering the sands. The whale carcasses were once so plentiful that locals used their bones to build their homes. But, the Skeleton Coast has also become a graveyard for many ships as well as marine mammals. Due to the dense fog, strong seas, unpredictable currents, and severe winds nearby, many ships have become caught up on the Skeleton Coast. The sailors that did make it to land had no hope of surviving on this hostile coast since it bordered the desert. Many died of dehydration. Even if they did make it, fearsome beasts lurk on the Skeleton Coast. It's not uncommon to see lions hunting seals, elephants, hyenas, and other animals prowling the area. Not that the waters are any better, with 11 species of sharks guarding the shoreline's waves. The shores and landscape of this area are like a museum full of maritime history. The remains of Portuguese galleons that are centuries old sit alongside the rusting steel hulls of modern vessels. Over the years, some of the wrecks have moved inland with some even on the other side of huge sand dunes. Notable ships you can find out here include the Dunedin Star, which shipwrecked in 1942, and a fishing trawler that ran aground in 2008 named Xyla. Many tourists come to the Skeleton Coast to experience its unique landscape, but they should be cautious. You never know what could be lurking. Thanks for watching. Which of these ship graveyards fascinated you the most? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Bye.